Thanks to you, this trailer will be available for anyone to purchase in the near future, and I'll get to that later. But for this video, it's picking up where we left off. We'll be taking you inside the interior of this trailer and showing you just the new innovations and the unique features you probably have never seen before. And then there's my favorite part of the video. I'm gonna show you how we took our four favorite trailers, unique trailers, and integrated them all into this one trailer design. I'll be sharing interesting things like why teardrop trailers are not as aerodynamically sound as many of us think they are. If you haven't seen the first video of this build, we made this trailer for our family, but after you watched it and all your comments, Charles from Teardrop Light was easily persuaded to build this trailer for the masses. And like I stated before, I have no skin in the game here. I will not make a penny from the sales of this trailer. So with that said, make sure you provide your feedback on this design because it's your comments that will ultimately decide what does or does not go into the final build of this trailer. So we're in the den. Um, some of you actually camp when it's cold. So I got a Propex heater. Soon into our relationship, Charles and I had an impasse with this trailer. He wanted an air conditioner. I did not. Now it wasn't because I didn't believe in them. EcoFlow had just come out with a very practical AC for small campers. But for those of you who watch the channel, you know I travel in Alaska with my family or in the Western states, and we just have no need for one. But Charles and Teardrop Light, their company is in Texas. So although this camper you're seeing in this video will not have an AC, see how I won this first impasse? This trailer design will obviously be built around the potential of adding an AC for those of you traveling in warmer, humid climates. So we're in the den. Um... Underbed storage, three of these. Slide one in, slide it over, slide one in, slide it over, slide the last one in, and there'll be some kind of closure mechanism. Now, I hope you've already asked, why do they only go one deep? Because there's a door gonna be on the side, both sides, 38 inches wide, 74 inches across, 10 and a half inches, deep. How many tents do you think you could put in there? Barbecue? I believe this trailer has more storage than, maybe by a factor of three, than, than most campers. Of course, it's, it's big. Now, I should mention here, Charles has the intention of making this a very bare bones trailer. He wants people to be able to customize it themselves. He wants to keep the manufacturing costs down so that ultimately this can be an affordable trailer for you. So just keep that in mind when you're watching this video that the trailer you're seeing here, our philosophy behind the one we're building for our family is different than what Charles will probably take to market. For my family's model, I want this to be our experimental trailer. I wanna use it for testing everything in the industry. So to do that, I'm gonna to have to build up some of the base components of this to be able to support that additional gear and equipment. And that building up is where we came into our second impasse. Man, Charles is tough to work with. Spoiler alert, this won't be the last disagreement him and I have in this video. We're gonna have some way to eat here. So obviously there'll be cabinets here um, with, with the, the bins going across. This is at 32, 32 inches high. There'll be plumbing so that there'll be the ability to make toast and coffee in the morning inside the cabin and this will make a good cook surface. Uh, there'll be storage down below here. Due to the supply chain issues, our trailer build got delayed. Ugh. And because of this, we weren't going to have a trailer for our family by the summer unless we came up with a less complicated power system. Now I had put together a huge list of components for Charles to put into this, all from Victron. It's those blue components that you've seen before but it was huge. The system required a DC to DC battery charger, MPPT controllers, an inverter, a DC step-down converter, not to mention batteries and some sort of interface and then tying this all together with some nice cable management. I put the shopping list together, emailed it off to Charles and he was like, I could tell he wasn't thrilled, let's just say that. I knew that Red Arc had the Manager 30, which many of you are aware of, and that would reduce some of these components. But as you can see here, 
there's still a number of components to install and we'd still need to source lithium batteries and solar from another brand or two. Charles' solution was the EcoFlows power kits, which now in hindsight, I'm so glad he stumbled on this. I'm glad he stopped me in my tracks because check out how fast this install was. It was ridiculously simple. And obviously it includes all the components needed in one nice clean housing and it came with the batteries and solar we needed. I love this template. One other thing to note is that our family's constantly bouncing from trailer to trailer as you see in these videos. And because of this, I often tell my wife May, when we purchase gear for either this trailer or a campsite, it really needs to be modular. Anything we grab needs to be able to be swapped from one dwelling to the next. And at some point in the near future, we're gonna move out of this trailer and into the final prototype, and then we'll have to swap again. So having a power system that can easily be swapped, it's just going to be huge for our family. And it's going to give us the ability to use it for other applications like off-grid cabins or yurt living. These are things that we do outside of the channel, but it sure would be nice if more and more of our gear just crossed over. Before I move on to the next component of the trailer, I did want you to know that once we get this trailer out into the woods, we will explain the EcoFlow power kit in more details about how we'll be using it and what it can do. One of the things I'm most excited for is having the ability to track hourly, weekly, monthly, now power usage. And that's individualized tracking for each component. No more anecdotal run times for you guys. I can give you nice short-term and long-term summaries and find out which piece of gear really is the power hog and which isn't. I also like that everything can be wired to its own circuit, giving me control from the panel or from my phone. This is going to alleviate having to hard mount things with the kids in mind. As you've heard me say on other trailers, places where people put switches are great for adults, but man, they become a toy quickly for our kids. With this, we now have the ability to just swipe across the phone and lock it down when one of those switches becomes their new favorite toys. Ha 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 ha. This basically is about four of my favorite trailers put into one design. And I'm gonna walk you through here and explain the things that when I take out teardrop trailers kind of irk me and I feel need changed and explain the things that I've had great experiences on, but I can only get it in this trailer or this trailer. The idea behind this trailer was, can't we put it all together? Can't we have a trailer that is impervious to water, a trailer that has stand-up ability, a trailer that has bunks, a trailer that gets good gas mileage, that's light, has good aero, stores in your garage, the list goes on and on. So let me just explain it to you quick. So let's start with the obvious. The first base of this trailer, the main base, is a teardrop. This has the nice aerodynamic teardrop design, which is aerodynamic 50% of the time, and I'll explain that a bit. It's got the low profile. This is only six and a half feet tall. So this means you can fit it in your garage. You can have a nice low profile for towing, but there's parts of this trailer that are going to live bigger than a teardrop. And again, I'll get to that in a bit. The teardrop has the nice galley outdoor cooking space. So you're not splattering food over your camper, getting food on your bed, smells all over, all the stuff I talk about in all the videos. The two issues I found with a teardrop trailer, number one, we can't stand up in them to change our clothes, to do a little mud room to take off our shoes before getting on the bed. And number two, a teardrop has this very obvious teardrop shape. Now I talked about arrow from the rear to the front, you have this nice, beautiful raindrop shape. But what people don't tell you about teardrop trailers is that where this sidewall meets the roof, the two pieces in traditional design, it makes a very good sail for the wind. So this is just a flat edge. So in Alaska, every time I leave my house, I go down the coast, the wind blows over, hits this edge, and I lose gas mileage at a rate higher than if I take my car over a pass. Now, this is where the Scamp trailer comes in. I took out the Scamp, it's heavier than my teardrop. It's bigger in all ways, it's taller. I thought I would have a horrible experience towing it with my four cylinder vehicle. And it actually, on those side winds, barely took a hit. Why? Because it's made of composite. Composite allows us to put in these rounded rolling edges. So when the wind comes here, it has a place to work over and this becomes less of a sail. So we're gonna work our way back to the front. 
If you look here, obviously this is not traditional teardrop. And what this is, this is more scamp for me or more of my vintage trailer that had the bunks. Our boys are growing. May and I want space in our own queen bed. So what this is here, this is actually covered with composite in the final design. So no canvas for mildew, no rot. It's impervious to water like the entire trailer. So what happens here, East needs a little headroom. So when we get to camp, this bumps right up. He has that extra headroom and now he has a window to let in more light into the trailer. Below this bunk is Rye sitting down there. He has plenty of room. It's already built into this shape. The bottom bunk hinges up and there's a lot of cubic feet of storage under there. You'll put the stuff you don't use very often there. Emergency stuff, seasonal stuff. Now here's where another trailer comes into play. I started with a four by eight teardrop, you'd know this, and thought I would never want any wider. It didn't make sense. It sounded harder to tow, harder to park, harder to use. But then I got my vintage camper and I got the cargo trailer and they became wider and I didn't notice anything at all. I've noticed when a trailer gets longer, when a trailer gets heavier, when a trailer gets more drag from things on the side, I found that having a camper a little wider only brought more benefits. I really didn't see a lot of drawbacks. There is rarely a time that I'm wishing my trailer could fit through that spot. I had it twice with the bean trailer last summer, but typically everywhere I go and my family goes, a six foot wide trailer meets that bill. A bigger trailer typically adds more weight, adds more drag. A trailer like this, if built right, didn't add any of that, but gained an extra foot in the galley, an extra foot in the cabin, an extra foot throughout the entire trailer in terms of width, and that did a lot for me. Now, I think you can see this line here. This is what really makes the trailer unique. We're gonna have some way to eat here. So obviously there'll be cabinets here um, with, with the, the bins going across. There'll be plumbing so that there'll be the ability to make toast and coffee in the morning. Now this is my favorite part of the galley. As you know, this is where the pass-through will be. I can just pull the drawer through in and out. I can hand, you know, food to May, coffee in the morning. I can give her sleeping bags or whatever through this. And then the same thing, I can be in there with her closed in and still get the stuff from out here. So I don't have to be out here passing. Everything slides in and out. So if you want things on both sides of the trailer, you just stick it in the cabins that will be here. There will be a three burner stove here and there will be a fridge here. And what's so neat about this trailer, because we built it a bit longer. So this is, I think it's close to a 14 foot trailer. I was trying to build it between a 13 foot scamp and a 16 foot scamp. So it wouldn't look too ridiculous on the road. This galley is deeper than most galleys you see. So behind the fridge, I have extra reserves of water. Same thing for the cooktop over here. There's gonna be water back there. So instead of being able to carry six gallons, two six gallon jugs, so we are carrying 12 gallons, this one we're going to be carrying closer to 16. Now I talk often about not needing a lot of water and that's because I'm worried about weight. But when you make a composite trailer and your trailer weighs half as much as a regular trailer, you have the benefit of bringing more water. Another benefit, we have a full galley hatch giving me cover from rain. This is going to be rounded out so nobody hits their head on it. It'll have gas struts, it'll have lights. It's going to be all painted white. So you're gonna to have to visualize this. this is not a black the Hunt for Red October submarine. Uh, these wheels will be moved a little further forward. Not too much that will get sway, but for the right balance. When I design a trailer, I almost always include brakes. I think it makes for a safer, towing experience. This time I'm using a Dexter electric brake and I'm using an auto brake on trailer control box made by auto brake. This black box has motion sensors. It knows when the trailer's being stopped and it helps. And you can adjust how aggressively it helps. It's got a remote control so you can make those adjustments and it's got an emergency button so you can apply the brakes manually if need be. Then the den. The den came from living in that pop-up trailer for what? What did we live in there for? Three weeks, I think, May and I, maybe a month. 
And having that open space was such a good feeling. We were able to run around, have little dinners. We're gonna have a drop down table here, drop down chairs so our family can eat and hang out in there. It's going to be a nice little space. We're calling it our den, our mud room. You jump in, have a place to change shoes, change your clothes. If you had a little porta potty, you could go to the bathroom in the night there. There's a lot of things you could make this room into. And it is 54 inches deep. In this space, down below here, there'll be a fan pulling air in through a filter, a filter you'll be able to buy at any auto parts store because it fits standard GM SUVs. So there's air being forced into the cabin and out whatever vents you've got open. Because I don't like things on the outside of the trailer because I call them drag buckets. They slow you down. So when I see a trailer with something attached on the side or on the roof, I start thinking like a pilot. I go, ugh. <laughs> and so what I have here is a monocoque, all composite trailer. There is no frame. Wait, what did he just say? There is no frame. There's a metal tongue. There's a metal receiver for the tongue. And there's various reinforcements in, in critical places, but it's mostly carbon fiber and another fiber that I'm gonna keep to myself because it's really cutting edge stuff. Um, and I may decide to brag about it one day, so. I told you we'd have another disagreement in this video. Now in Charles's defense, he's been working in the experimental aviation industry, specifically in composites for a very long time. He's made it all from composite landing gear, roll cages to 30 foot wings. And he was willing to come to an agreement with me on this. If it doesn't work out on the first round, we'll be putting a lightweight frame on the trailer and Charles will tell the world that Drew was right. Ha <laughs> ha I may have added that last part. Without the frame, this trailer should be coming in under 1,000 pounds. How crazy is that? And even with a frame, I know the weight is still going to be insanely low. I give Charles a hard time, but if you've seen the first video, you know him and his friends are quite gifted individuals. From creating life-size Star Wars replicas to the bottle opening tool that protects bottle caps for avid collectors. And then there's Charles' variation on the old Acme paint can tool. It opens cans, it pokes holes in the paint gutter, allowing the paint to drip back into the can and then functions to cleanly close the lid. Yes, we all need one of these, right? These are all things that just attest to the creative mind of Charles and why I've enjoyed working with him so much during this project. On the left here, you'll see the first video in this build series. On the right, we have a playlist of all the walkthrough videos we have created over the years. I highly recommend you watch these videos. Meeting with these builders has greatly increased my understanding of small camper trailers, and I think you will benefit from them in the same way that I have. As usual, stay safe out there on the road, and we will see you in the next episode.